Hi everyone, welcome back to Factomart's knowledge base video. In this video, we'll talk about the topic how can you tell when to replace your MCCB? The topic is part of the series of our blog called Maintaining the Power Distribution System, where this is a three part series. In this series, how can you tell when to replace your MCCB is the first installment. The second is how to safely reset a trip MCCB. This is to explain the steps that you should follow to safely carry out the procedure and what to check during each step. The last article covered the situation where if you need to replace an MCCB, what specific specification should you be looking at so that you are choosing the right replacement. Let's start today's topic. There are two main points in this topic. The first is the fact that a circuit breaker have a limited lifetime and its lifetime depend on the type of fault that it has experienced. The second is how to determine that the MCCB needs to be replaced. We will talk about the method of how to do this. There are three methods that we will talk about. On to our first point, a circuit breaker has a limited lifetime. According to the standard IEC 947-2, the manufacturer has to ensure that a circuit breaker can withstand at least two short circuits. Now with some ICU and ICS specification, they may be able to ensure three short circuits, but after which the breaker will no longer be able to perform according to the specification. Now, this does not mean that if your MCCB tripped twice, then it has to be replaced. This is because a circuit breaker does not only trip because of a short circuit. There are three types of tripping mechanism, which are of course short circuit. The second one is an overload trip where more current is being drawn than it's designed for. And the last thing is what's called a shunt trip, where signal from other protection device are signaling the breaker to trip. Devices such as protection relays like over voltage or under voltage or phase loss relay. The difficult part is that when a breaker trip, we cannot tell from the breaker which tripping mechanism caused the breaker to trip. We will discuss how to determine why a breaker trip in the second part of the video. First, we have a video that will demonstrate the lifetime of a circuit breaker. We would like to thank Farah Chamut for the test video provided. This is an endurance test of a breaker with a braking capacity of 50 kA. In this test, a fault of 25 kA, half that of the braking capacity with a voltage of 480 volt is applied. The breaker is exercised between tests, i.e. the supply is removed. The breaker is then allowed to cool before being turned on and off three times before subjected to a new test. Now let's take a look. The first time that the fault is applied, you can see that the breaker works without any issue. The second test shows some evidence of an ionized product indicating degradation within the breaker. During the fifth test, the amount of ionized product has again increased, indicative of aging. During the eighth test, significant ionized products are evident. After this test, continuity testing indicated that the breaker was no longer conductive when the breaker was reset to the closed position. This occurred even though the handle still functioned with a good audible clicking sound generally associated with a functional breaker. This is a freeze frame of the eighth and last test. When utilizing a multiple use device, the key thing is being able to know when that device can be safely reused. We will now discuss methods of determining the condition of a breaker. The first thing to do is to visually inspect the MCCB. Look for any sign of oxidation, dark ashes or cracking in the plastic molding. If they exist, then the breaker has already been subjected to fault most likely short circuit and you would need to investigate further or consider replacing it. 
The second thing to do is when a fault occurred, then keep a record of the short circuit fault. If at least two short circuits has occurred, then you would need to replace the MCCB. You can determine whether it's short circuit from the load or the condition of the wiring. And the last method is when you are doing your preventive maintenance, either annually or biannually, to use the measuring equipment to check. The three types of measuring equipment that you should use is the DMM digital multimeters to check that there are no phase loss on either any of the phase. The second one is the micro ohmmeter to measure the MCCB's contact resistance and they should be very low depending on the MCCB rating. The last one is the mega ohmmeter or the insulation tester used to measure the insulation resistance of the MCCB. So to conclude, I would like to leave you with uh, two points. Number one is that a circuit breaker has a limited lifetime. You cannot use it indefinitely. The second point is to check carefully, especially for a breaker that is larger than 100 amp. In this series, Maintenancing the Power Distribution System, we have covered the topic, how can you tell when to replace your MCCB? Next, we'll cover the topic of safely resetting a trip MCCB. And lastly, how to correctly choose an MCCB to replace your existing one. Please press like to show the support to the channel. If you have any questions, then please leave them in a the comment. That's it from me today. Thank you and goodbye.